All right, Ed, um, I really appreciate you spending some time sharing your experience of the hyperbaric chamber. Um, uh, before we get to that, I know you've been one of our clients for a while now. How would you say that overall experience has been? It's been great. I mean, um, coming here wouldn't be something that I would keep doing if it wasn't a good experience, obviously. The initial issue that brought me in here was kind of a chronic uh, issue from back pain and everything like that. It was mostly fixed already, you know, months ago, but I signed up for the wellness program. We were coming here on a monthly basis and it's been helping me do a lot more in terms of getting to know my own body. Um, and so it's definitely worth it in terms of spending the time to invest in yourself. And I think coming here has been really helpful in helping me understand, you know, my own body and, you know, working with it and my limitations and, you know, how I can expand certain areas and, you know, things like that, so. Yeah, that's one of the things Dr. Shane has said about like a lot of her clients, including yourself, of teaching you to actually learn your body a bit. So what do you actually even do for work? I work at a freight forwarding company right now. Um, we do import export mostly uh, seafood from Mexico to Asia. Um, very sedentary kind of, you know, I sit in the car for hours at a time waiting for trucks to get there at the airport and stuff. So uh, that was kind of one of the contributing factors of my wanting to continue this even after my initial issue was over with the lower back pain. I think that's a problem a lot of people have, right? When they have a really sedentary life and then you're into health and fitness, you do your exercise, but that only lasts hard workout, let's say you're going two hours or something. You know, like, how do you balance the two? How do you get your body to, to function the way that you do now? In terms of motivation and, you know, the, the reason I wanted to do this was really starting at the beginning of last year, um, I had been kind of struggling with weight and eating and things like that. And at the beginning of last year, I decided, you know what, it's time to change. I'm turning 40 as of last year. Uh, I can't get any younger, you know, and I can only try to improve my body in a way that will keep me uh, going as long as possible, if that's the name of the game. So uh, since last year, since January of last year, I'm down almost 40 pounds now. Um, you know, I've always been into cycling for the last decade, and I kind of just re... Uh, invigorated myself into that uh, as a sport, um, added in uh, a lot of weight training, um, you know, kind of in a parallel kind of development with my wife becoming a certif certified personal trainer. Um, you know, she helped me motivate myself and say, you know what, like, once again, you can't get any younger, you can't stop the aging process, but at least you can try to take care of your body and maintain it so that you can be going as long as possible. Yeah, I think um, personally, right, I'm, I'm married, I'm in my 40s, I have two children, and then one thing, Dr. Kelly is my wife. We always talk about, like, we need you here for a long time, and to be there for the kids, and, and be here for family, and we've all, we've known other people in our lifetime that maybe they didn't take care of themselves as much, and then they're not able to enjoy it as much. So obviously you have, like, you have a difference in physique, you have, you've lost some weight. Psychologically, emotionally, what has that done for you? Oh, it's been a big change. Um, one thing is being able to just be physically active without feeling tired. Um, it's changed my sleep patterns, um, whereas before, you know, kind of being, I mean, I wasn't, you know, obese. But, you know, being overweight, uh, kind of had some little bit of sleep apnea going on, uh, sleeping and, you know, wasn't sleeping well through the night. Um, in the last year or so after my initial kind of, uh, you know, change and maintaining over the last year, really, I've uh, been able to sleep better, I've uh, been able to enjoy food um, in the sense that before I would kind of indulge a little bit too much. And that kind of, you know, was a cyclical problem because, you know, you start eating too much and you start getting, you know, feeling bad. And then because you're feeling bad, you start eating, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Um, but now that, you know, I kind of know what my limitations are, what my body's doing, what my body can take, um, being able to kind of enjoy one food on a different level, um, whereas, you know, not binging, it's just kind of enjoying the flavors and everything, um, enjoying the process. And um, once again, being able to sleep, um, 
it, it, it's it's really night and day change. Um, and then just being able to, you know, as far as cycling goes, before uh, it'd be hard for me to go, you know, on those long climbs or long, long group rides, and now it's like oh, I'm kind of like more in the front now with the group, you know, not not in the back and saying wait 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 for me wait for me, you know. So yeah, it's been, it's been really nice. No, I appreciate you sharing this stuff because it's that's the stuff most people don't acknowledge, right? It's just like no, my sleep's okay. And what we try to get out of people is like, it can be better. Or my butt, yeah, it kind of hurts. I can deal with it. It's like, what if we could help create a life where it doesn't hurt as much? What does that do for you? So I think it's really important that you, you, know, you share that um, experience. So fast forwarding a little bit to hyperbaric oxygen therapy. You, I know you tried it last year. What was that first experience in the chamber like for you? Um, you know, I didn't really know too much about uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy before coming here. Um, and it was suggested that it could help with kind of, you know, recovery, with kind of uh, body fatigue. And, um, you know, I think during that time there was a special going on. And I said, you know, let's try it. You know, let's, let's try it out. Me and my wife uh, both tried it. She was coming off a injury related to lifting and weightlifting. So, you know, for her, it was more about the restorative effect. Uh, for me, I really wanted to see the effect of uh, aiding in sleep and also just kind of body relaxation, um, which, you know, was one of the things that I read that, you know, it could help with that. So that first experience, you know, was interesting. Um, I think having uh, done a little bit like snorkel and stuff like that, like it helped me because going into the chamber, you know, while it's pressurizing that first 15 minutes or so, you know, your ears really get in and uh, you, know, you have to keep pressurizing, keep pressurizing to kind of expand your ears so you don't get that kind of headache from it. Um, my wife said she was having a little difficult time with that because she didn't know how to kind of equalize. Um, but overall, it was great. Um, the first time I was in there, I just kind of just listened to music and, you know, scrolled on the phone and it was over before I, started, before I knew it, so. And you, you did it a few times, nothing crazy. It was just more like experiencing it. Um, as of late, you've been doing it a little bit more consistently. Um, what brought you in to, to do it, to actually kind of dive into like a plan? Um, so two weeks ago, I finally got COVID. And, um, you know, out of all my friends, I was probably one of the last to get it. Right. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I thought that, you know what, maybe I won't get it this time. Um, but, you know, finally got it and it kind of hit me pretty hard. You know, I had been, I had gotten my vaccination, got my booster, got my bivalent booster and everything. So I thought it was kind of out of the woods. Um, when I finally did get it, uh, it really, really messed me up for a while. Um, to the point where in the last two weeks, like for example, today was the first time I actually worked out before coming here. Um, just to, you know, I wanted to guard my body. but. Um, as soon as I got it, you know, staying at home for the last week before, you know, coming in this week, uh, I started reading up on, okay, so what are kind of the long-term recovery methods? Obviously, um, you know, it's a newer disease. We only have three years of it right now. So, you know, we really, really don't know what's going to go on in the future. But um, <clears throat> one of the things I read about was using the HBOT uh, for kind of mitigating the effects of long COVID, um, and which I did get in the last week after I first started getting uh, the symptoms, you know, a little bit of brain fog, a little bit of kind of uh, fatigue, uh, body fatigue. And so, you know, in researching it, and I mean, when I say research, it's not like, you know, I read some, uh, you know, compressed meme off someone's Facebook, you know, whatever. <laughs> but no, I actually went to like um, the National Institute of Health, the National Library of Medicine, and kind of read some of the studies um, over the last year or so, there was one out of London last year that had, what is it, 10 uh, participants, no control group, but 10 participants all doing uh, HBOT over a certain amount of time and kind of, you know, gauging what their own self-reported uh, effects afterward, afterwards were in terms of, you know, what was their uh, attentiveness and what did their brain fog feel like, what did their fatigue feel like, and they all showed improvement. Um, and then the other one earlier this year in, I think it was Israel that had about 40 something participants with a control group uh, in the HBOT without the oxygen and another you know, group in the HBOT with the oxygen. And 
you know, in terms of the results, they all showed improvement in terms of um, the longer lasting effects of COVID that you really can't quantify in terms of testing. Uh, other than self-reporting, like, you know, chronic fatigue, if your body feels, you know, fatigue, is there really a test that you can test for that? Or is it something that your body and uh, that you can only self-report? And so, um, you know, for me, being in it for the last week, I've been doing it, uh, this is my fifth day in a row um, of it. And, you know, obviously I can't be objective on it. It's only subjective because I can only, you know, t tell you what I feel. Um, the first few days uh, after I started, I was still feeling very fatigued in the body, still feeling kind of a little bit of brain fog, a little bit of, you know, decreased cognition in terms of thinking about stuff um, and kind of remembering things or, you know, I'll remember to do something and as soon as I start to like open up the web page to look at what I wanted to look at, I forget what I'm looking for. And, you know, that could be age related, I don't know, you know, but uh, as of today, um, just finishing my last session, you know, in the last day or two already, I felt improved kind of um, body energy um, in terms of the, the first day or two while I was, you know, when I first started, I was still doing, you know, a couple of naps a day because I would just be at home sitting there and just feel tired all of a sudden. Whereas, you know, the last day or two, um, I'm fine. Like, I don't feel like that kind of body heaviness anymore um, and as far as the brain fog I don't feel like that um, that mindlessness that goes on so I think it's been a market improvement for me personally you know subjectively so yeah because you're a pretty highly functioning individual right uh, I suppose yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then because it, it's interesting we see this journey right it's like uh, uh, beginning of last year, you're like, okay, I'm gonna do something about my health. You, you're a little bit more in tune with movement and stuff because of the stuff you've been doing with Dr. Shana. Your wife uh, is doing all this nutritional stuff, this personal training stuff. So you're a lot more in tune with your body now. Being such a highly functional person, when you have this brain fog, when you have this fatigue, like, oh, like what does that do to you? Oh man, it's. You know, it's confusing because, you know, you know that you're capable of certain things. You know that you're supposed to be functioning at, you know, X, Y, Z level. And to know that for some reason you're not, it's very confusing and it's, it's a scary, to be honest, because, um, you know, the only reason why your body would respond in a way, for example, you know, the body fatigue is there's something wrong, right? You know, otherwise, if you're perfectly healthy, if, you know, everything's great, then you shouldn't have that kind of uh, that kind of response in your body, and so um, for the last you know week during COVID, and then you know right now still in the recovery process, um, it, it definitely was concerning to me because I felt like, what if it stays like this? You know, and that's a big fear. You know, what if it stays like this or it gets worse? You know, luckily it's been improving as days goes by, and. Um, but yeah, body fatigue and brain fog. The, the brain fog is also scary too because um, you're so used to being able to do certain things, you know, in terms of your, your mindset, your, your cognitive ability. And sometimes when you don't have that ability anymore, then it's, it's a major concern, you know, I don't want to think about, you know, in the future if there's any degenerative cognitive diseases or anything like that, but, you know, just having a slight glimpse into what it could be like makes me really, really want to, you know, avoid that and really try to find ways that I can improve myself so that I never get to that level. Anymore. Right. I, it's, it's been an interesting journey for us. We, we've had the chamber for a year, year and a half now. And early on when, you know, we people that had COVID related symptoms and, and they used it. And before there was a lot of research, right? It was like, this stuff's helping a, su a subset of people, um, especially along the lines of brain fog and energy and fatigue and stuff like that. And it's hard to say exactly the science behind it. And just in basically the general science behind the hyperbaric chamber is that it infuses you with oxygen so your body can regenerate and do its job. And I think, unfortunately, what we've seen over time is that 
certain people have adverse reactions that is just delayed or just stalls. So sometimes it's like cliche, we jumpstart your body to doing stuff, but it's been amazing to kind of to see the difference in, in some of our clients and I'm really happy that you're having a positive experience with it. The int interesting thing is that because you are so in tune, like I said, there's a lot of other people out there that they're feeling these symptoms. Do you think it's that, do you think they're not aware of it or they're just like, oh, this is normal? What do you think? You know, uh, that's an interesting question because going back to one of the first reasons I came here in terms of my physical kind of ailment that brought me here, um, you know, my, uh, my lower back. If you get used and your body and your mind gets used to operating in a certain way, it'll find ways around it to, as a crutch. So, um, you know, for me, like knowing my lower back was kind of messed up, knowing my shoulder was kind of messed up. I always kind of, that, that was my baseline. That became my baseline as far as, okay, this is how I live now. And I think if somebody, you know, has some of the longer effects, long-term of long COVID uh, effects, they may not know that there could be something that could help them. And then this becomes their new baseline. And so they figure out ways around on how to keep operating with this new baseline. Because I think as humans, we're highly adaptable. Whatever happens, you know, if, if you lose a leg, you still will learn how to, uh, you know, continue on without it, you know, with prosthesis, whatever it may be. Uh, and I think, you know, with the mind, your body finds ways to go around whatever is kind of standing in your way at the same time as well. And I think that they may not know it. People may not recognize it because of other issues that may have kept them kind of in this baseline that wasn't always at the highest functioning level. So it, it's, it's, it's difficult, you know, for, for, for you to be cognizant of it if you don't know what you're looking for, right, so. Yeah, definitely, it's not, the hyperbaric chamber isn't popularly known, like if you go back years, Michael Jackson used it when he had a, um, when he had those burns, he had burns from a Pepsi commercial and it was literally to expedite the healing process. And then they figured out in Israel, especially there's a lot of studies there that um, for many ailments. So it's important to, like you said, there's studies, there's so many factors. And if you're trying to just isolate one thing, it's very difficult. You just, you, you had COVID and you have like five different symptoms. You can't, you can't like just uh, control one thing. So what would you say to someone out there that's, that may be dealing with longer symptoms from, from any disease, like what would you say, would you say HBOT is a potential, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say solution because it's never, there's no such thing as a one part solution. Part of your success is that you've stayed, you eat well, you, you stay healthy. Those are all enormous parts of any recovery process. I always look at the hyperbaric chamber as something, as an adjunct to support the things that you should be doing well anyways. So what would you say to someone out there that's kind of dealing with these kinds of symptoms? The, the hyperbaric chamber, you know, in terms of the oxygen therapy is not without its risks, you know, as far as, you know, what can happen, especially if you have like sinus issues and, you know, things like that. But with that said, um, in general, it really doesn't hurt to try. And that's the thing too, it's like, just like physical therapy, just like coming here, it's not come here something is wrong, you get it fixed and you leave. No, it's, it's the amount of work you're willing to put in yourself. And not only that is the consistency of the work. And that's the thing, that's one of the things with the h too is, you know, if I came here for one day, did it one time and said, okay, that's it. And, you know, observe myself and say, okay, well, I didn't really feel anything. Did I really try it? You know, I don't, I don't think that's, you know, a, a, a good measure of having tried it. So my initial goal was, you know, okay, let's do it, you know, reading those, reading those uh, kind of research and, and you know, where they're doing it for 10 days. I said, well, let me try for five. Let's see how I feel after five. At least it's some consistency. At least it's some, um, you know, it's not just a single, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You know? And so I think anyone that may be feeling any of the long-term effects is, you know, not only try it, but be consistent with it, have a plan, you know, set yourself 
uh, up so that you have a goal of what it looks like to you to have what you define as success from you know the result of doing it. So you know if you go in and say you know I just want to see how it feels after X amount of time and you know I put in the work and let the machine work for me and you can judge afterward you know what it was like you know if you met what you feel like your goal was and I think that's one of the difficult barriers of entry is that you know in a lot of people's mindset they just want stuff to be fixed right. you, you know just go here and fix it and then, you know I don't have to put in work but you know it's taking the time and the energy and you know and and um, to come here and really focus on what your goals are and you know for me spending time in the HBOT is easy because I just take a nap in there you know I, I go in I put my beanie on I put my earplugs in put my hoodie on and uh, you know it's one of the best hours of naps that you know I get you know I just I feel restored my body feels like it sinks in heavily at the same time it feels weightless it's it's a very strange feeling but it, I love it I love it it's really cool that you, you share that it's the I would say it's like anything else it's like gym or doing exercise if I do 10 bicep curls on one day, I'm, I'm not gonna get big muscles. I have to do 10 bicep curls over, consistently over time. And that's the same way your body heals. Okay, we boost your body with oxygen to start this healing process, to, to create energy, to create more cells. Once, it's like, no, we need to do that consistently so we can actually um, help your body heal from things it's been feeling for a long, long time. So. I really appreciate you spending the time and sharing your experience and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Awesome. All right, thank you. Cool. Thanks, Jason.